Well, good evening and uh, welcome to another Wednesday's Word. Uh, we're glad to be able to come to you midweek, give you a word of encouragement, give you a word that we believe will help you, encourage you through the rest of the week. And so, uh, again, we're in the series on love in action, a study on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as we're learning really the what true love is, not what the world says love is, but what the Bible says love is. And so if you have your Bibles, we're in 1 Corinthians 13. We'll be in chapter and verse uh, 5 uh, when we start out. Uh, we've been looking at those characteristics of love. We've already covered six. Love is patient. Love is kind. Is not jealous. Love does not brag. Is not arrogant. Does not act unbecomingly. Those are the ones we've covered so far, those six characteristics. And we'll be looking at two more uh, during this time as we uh, find out how to love better. We can love better. We can improve. I know the world teaches that love's just an emotion and it's just like this thing that just, uh, just exists. No, we, we work on this. We, we do these things. It's love in action. And so, uh, yes, many times it creates a feeling, but it's that action that we take so that we can love other people, whether it's improving our marriages, whether it's improving our relationship with coworkers, with friends, with church members, um, with uh, anybody. Uh, that's how we improve our love is by really looking and applying these characteristics to our own lives. So let's look at that seventh characteristic uh, found there in verse five. And it says, it does not seek its own. It does not seek its own. Uh, the Amplified says it this way, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. It is not self-seeking. Uh, the Living Bible says it does not demand its own way. And so we can see that, that love, in its truest sense, seeks other people and seeks to love. Uh, and you may be thinking right off the bat, you know, well, Pastor Tim, I know I need to uh, seek uh, love for others, but I, I love, I want love for me too. And I, I don't think any of us would uh, uh, disagree that all of us like to receive love, uh, but it's focused here on that we're not seeking to be loved, we're seeking to love. I believe love will come our way. Uh, but if it doesn't, we still keep seeking other people's to love other people. We don't seek it for ourselves. Uh, matter of fact, uh, William Barclay said there's really kind of two kinds of people. Uh, those that are always seeking and looking that life owes them. And the others who never forget that they owe life. <laughs> they owe the Lord. Uh, so it's the mindset. Does life and everybody else owe me or do I owe everybody else? Matter of fact, even Romans talks about to owe no man nothing, talking about monetarily, but it's saying except to love one another. That's what we owe. We owe love. And it's a debt that we never can pay, whether it's the Lord or other people. Or And, and again, we're not just seeking to love those who've loved us. Remember, Jesus made that clear. If you love those that love you, you really haven't done much. You know, that's pretty easy. Kind of like I always call it like the ping pong game. You know, you you if somebody serves the the ping pong ball over to your court of love and you serve it back, that's that's and then they serve it back to you, that makes it easy. But what if you're not receiving love? Uh, you can give it. Why? Because you're not seeking love for yourself. You're seeking for others. And that's what love does. It doesn't have to have it doesn't have to be served back to itself. I, I know you've heard it mentioned from the pulpit uh, and heard it in probably different venues and things about the rules of a toddler. And I wanted to mention it here because I think it applies so much because we don't have to learn selfishness. Uh, it just comes in our flesh and it shows up real early in life of how we're seeking our own. Uh, listen to these rules of the toddler. If I like it, it's mine. If it's in my mouth, it's mine. If I can take it from you, it's mine. If I had it a little while ago, it's mine. If it's mine, it must never 
appear to be yours in any way. If I'm playing with something, all the pieces are mine. If it looks like mine, it's mine. If you're playing with something and you put it down, it's mine. If it's broke, it's yours. The author was unknown, but boy, that author sure made it clear, uh, clear as crystal of how that selfish attitude really shows up in the life of a toddler or, or in the life of adults too, because we can so easily focus on, hey, what are you doing for me? And uh, reverse that on how love is to be looking at others. Matter of fact, sometimes people refer to this kind of thing as the princess syndrome or the prince syndrome. It's like always, what is in it for me? What are you going to do for me? Instead, of, and I'm not saying we don't like things done for ourselves, but our focus is, what can I do for you? And because that prince or princess syndrome can destroy friendships and can destroy marriages uh, because it's that selfishness that I, I'm only looking for what you can do for me. L listen to what the scripture says about Jesus in Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. See, he didn't come to be served, but to serve. That was his objective. That was his focus. That should be ours as well. Um, one of my favorite verses, Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were sinners, he, he, he showed that love. He wasn't seeking it. He was seeking to give it. And uh, what a great passage that is. Many of you are familiar, as we've mentioned, the uh, a love language, Gary Chapman's love languages that we've referred to in different conferences, marriage conferences, and it applies to everybody. I mean, it can apply to, you know, love languages to your children. It's, it's all the same. There's five ways we can speak love to other people. Uh, we know their words, actions, time, quality time, uh, gifts, and touch. But if you realize all those are seeking somebody else and giving in other words, we're giving words to somebody else. We're giving actions for somebody else. Uh, we're giving quality time for somebody else. We're giving gifts for somebody else. We're giving a touch that'll bless somebody else. And so it's all giving to others. It's all focus on others, those love languages. And uh, each person has one of those that are more meaningful to them, but... All of them are important to us, kind of like I look at it as a seafood platter. You know, you get everything there on it. We like a little of everything. We all would love all of those words, actions, uh, quality time, gifts and touch. Those are all important, but they are all giving and seeking what you can do for somebody else and, and what you can do there. Uh, if you think about it, uh, just think about the fruit of the Spirit, you know, the when we had the Holy Spirit in us, the fruit of the Spirit, the first one listed is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love, and then it goes on to list the rest of them because we've got to have the Holy Spirit because in our flesh, we're just going to want to seek to be loved. But in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit filling us, then we can love this way because it's going to take His power and His might. We can't do this on our own. We can't do that in our flesh. We've got to let the Holy Spirit fill us and be walking in the Spirit so we can show that kind of true love. Now, many are familiar that studied history about Booker T. Washington. He, he was born in 1856. He was born a slave, but as a freed slave, he went on to do great things. He ended up uh, becoming educated in, uh, in universities. He ended up becoming the head of Tuskegee Institute. Uh, he became a great educator, a great influencer, did great, great things. And uh, he mentions in his autobiography of when he was a young boy as a slave, he talked about having to wear a brand new flax shirt. And a flax shirt, uh, flax was what they made. Uh, it's a cheap, rough material that they used uh, to make the clothing, especially the shirts, for the slaves. And uh, 
Booker T. Washington talked about how rough this material was. Uh, it became a little better once it got broke in, but when many times he was forced to wear a new one, and he said it was like hundreds of uh, burrs being in your skin. He, he equated it to uh, having a tooth pulled. Of course, back then you didn't have all the things you have. You may dread a tooth pull now, just think of back then. He, and that's what he said it was equal to. He said it was like hundreds of needle pricks on your body. It was just torture to put one on that first time until it took several days for it to even break in. And Booker had a older brother, a little bit older brother named John. And in his autobiography, Booker T. Washington says that John did one of the most selfless things he's ever seen any slave relative do for another. He said John would, would always uh, volunteer to wear Booker's brand new flax shirt for a few days and him take the pain of that breaking in time. And then when it was broken in, he would take it and then let Booker put it on so it would feel better on him. Love does not seek its own. Right there you can see love sought the good of somebody else even when it cost that person personal time, personal pain, personal anguish. Whatever it did, it sought love. And that's what true love is. That's what Christ demonstrated when he died for us. He sought us out. And we need to love with the kind of love that doesn't seek its own. Uh, the next one is, and still in verse 5, is love is not provoked. Love is not provoked. Uh, King James said it's not easily provoked. The Amplified said it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. Uh, the Living Bible said it is not irritable or touchy. Uh, may I add, maybe easily offended is kind of what the idea here is not touchy, it's not easily offended, it's not easily provoked, it's not lose its temper easy. All of those things fall in this category of what it has to do. Uh, it comes from a word that means to arouse to anger. I mean, it can arouse quickly. Uh, matter of fact, William Barclay mentions, he said, the man who can master his temper can master anything and everything. Uh, now, it doesn't always, this principle doesn't always go into losing your temper, but it can because when you're easily provoked, usually those people can easily lose their temper because they're easily offended. How easily offended are we? Does it take a lot? You know, there's some people, man, I, I know some people, I don't even know what could offend them. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you seem like, man, they just take everything and they're fine with it. And then there's people that you know that are easily offended at something very small. And so we need to take this to heart and say, you know, I can't let this be me. Uh, Bill Gothard said, uh, his comment on it was, it is not hypersensitive or easily hurt. Now we're all hurt, but how much does that take to hurt us? And uh, love is not easily provoked, easily offended. Why? Because we want to receive grace. You know, when, when we've done somebody wrong or maybe it was just a mistake or fell short in some area, we want people to show us grace and say, hey, it's okay, or, you know, it'll be all right. Don't worry about it. I've done that before. Uh, it wasn't that big a deal, you know, but usually people that are easily offended will keep rubbing it in. Uh, they'll keep making more of it, almost to make the person even feel worse about what they've done, instead of showing the grace and not being easily provoked. First Peter 2.21, I think, illustrates it well. It says, for you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. And while suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to the one who judges righteously. That's how Christ did. He didn't return insult for insult, or he didn't revile back. He didn't return that. Why? He, he just, he wasn't provoked that way. He showed love. If you're familiar in Luke 9, 
where uh, Jesus is going from uh, going to Jerusalem and on his way to Jerusalem, he's going to pass through Samaria and he had people go to help make arrangements there. And uh, the people of Samaria, basically, long story short, they didn't want anything to do with Jesus. They were rejecting him. And uh, it says in verse 54, it says, when his disciples James and John saw this, that they were rejecting Jesus, uh, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Wow. What were they easily provoked? But he, Jesus, turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of. Man, those guys, they said, man, just give us the word. We'll call down fire on them. We'll zap them. We'll toast them. You know, but that wasn't the spirit that Christ exuded and, and wanted them to, to show. You know, it's said that a man once went up to the great preacher Jonathan Edwards and wanted to marry his daughter. And Jonathan uh, and all the people around knew that his daughter, Jonathan's daughter, had a very uncontrollable temper. She was easily provoked. And he told the guy, you cannot. But he said, I love her and she loves me. He said, it doesn't matter. And the guy said, why? He said this, because she is not worthy of you. And he said, but she's a Christian, isn't she? And he said, yes. And listen to these words. But the grace of God can live with some people with whom no one else could ever live. He knew until she got that temper, that easily offended, that easily provoked temper of hers, he knew that marriage was going to be a rough ordeal. How important it is for all of us to not be easily provoked. It's one of those things that we need to do to show love. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that you left us, Lord. These, these nuggets, Lord, these characteristics on how we can love others, Lord. And uh, Lord, we know it's a high standard, but Lord, we can do it through the power of your Holy Spirit. We can love that way. So Father, we thank you that you've given us such a great example of how you love us, Lord. And may we show that kind of love to other people in our lives. Father, we thank you. We praise you. And we just ask for the power to love this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just a few closing words. Men, don't forget about this Friday night, 7 o'clock, Spring Campus. Both campuses are coming together for this great event. It's going to be a free concert by Branded. Uh, many of you are familiar with their music. Uh, they just, uh, they've won many awards. Uh, they just uh, go all over the place. Um, singing and proclaiming Jesus. It's going to be a great night. And uh, don't only show up yourself, bring, bring another man with you. Uh, many people may not come to a, a church service. They may come uh, for a concert and uh, be able to be blessed and hear the word that way. And uh, so uh, use this opportunity for ministry. Use this time to invite somebody to come with you. And uh, it's a great opportunity that'll, uh, that's offered to us and Brandon's coming, and we're going to be blessed, and so we want you to be blessed as well, but we don't want you to be blessed just yourself. Bring somebody to be blessed with you. Also, don't forget about Sunday. Uh, Brother Joe's continuing the series in the end times. Uh, again, another great opportunity to hear a great word that people are interested, I believe, uh, more so than ever, about the end times and how things are going to end. And so uh, use that as a, a springboard to invite people to come to church or if you're watching online to be able to uh, spread that word to them uh, on this uh, great series so don't miss that just want to tell you i love you praise god for you and uh, we just praise god for you and our church and all the blessings god's given us and so praying for you and look forward to seeing you again god bless you